In this lesson, we're going to talk about shift registers. Shift registers are a feature of while loops and for loops which allow them to maintain memory. In a blank VI, let's quickly make a program that displays the iteration number of a while loop and stops when a button is pressed. On our block diagram, we'll create a while loop. Now create a stop button for the while loop. And now create an indicator to display the loop's iteration. Finally, let's place a delay within our while loop to make the indicator easy to see. We'll set it to 250 milliseconds. Running the program, we see the usual behavior. Now let's modify this program to view the behavior of the shift register. In order to create a shift register, we right click on the edge of the loop. In the context menu, we have the term Add Shift Register. Click it. Automatically, two terminals will be created, one on the right side and one on the left. The left side terminal gives us the value from the previous iteration, and the right side will contain the value for the next iteration. Let's make it so that each time through the loop, the program adds 5 to the previous value and displays it on another indicator. Place an add function on the block diagram and wire the left shift register to one of the inputs. Create a constant of 5 and wire it to the other input of the add function. You'll notice that the wire coming from the shift register is broken. If we hover over the wire, we see it is because the shift register is void or undefined. Once we wire the output of the add function to the right side of the shift register, you'll notice the wire isn't broken anymore. The wire is orange, indicating that our data type is a double precision floating point, the same as our constant. You may ask, what is the value in the shift register the first time through the loop? In this case, we want our initial value to be zero. Setting the initial value in a shift register is done by right-clicking on the left terminal and selecting Create Constant. We can enter in any value that we wish for our shift register to start with. In our case, we will leave it at zero. Now before we run our code, let's create an output indicator after the Add function to watch the execution. Now if we run our program, we see the value of our current sum indicator increases by 5 every iteration of our while loop. Another feature of the shift register is the ability to expand down the left side of the loop. This allows us to see the value not just from the previous iteration, but from the one before that, and so on. To demonstrate, let's create an indicator on the new shift register terminal. Notice that we get an error message. This is because we have initialized one shift register value, but not the rest. Creating a constant and setting it to zero will remove that error. Now if we run the program, we will see that the second terminal is one loop iteration behind the first one. In this lesson we talked about shift registers. We learned that shift registers allow us to maintain memory in both while loops and for loops.